So let's take a step back from here. And let's talk about trapezoids real quick. Okay. So we'll draw a quick trapezoid. Uh, could be like that. This could be very, very pointy over here. Okay. And my drawing may or may not look like it, but it should have. What makes a trapezoid a trapezoid? Two parallel lines. And that is it. That's all that's required. You know, could, could I make a trapezoid into a square? Or a rectangle? Yeah. Yeah, because it would have two parallel sides. It would meet that condition. A rectangle would have a lot of other special things about it, but it would still be a trapezoid. So just two parallel sides, that's all we need it to have. Okay? So here it is, a trapezoid. We did it in our homework. Kind of tried to theorize about a formula that we could come up with uh, that we could use to find the area of any trapezoid, given that it just has two parallel sides. Um, keeping in mind that if you were given a trapezoid, the kinds of things that you would probably measure are this, this, and of course, the height is a pretty common thing. Right? What we're really doing here is we're taking all these shapes, the triangle, the parallelogram, the trapezoid, we're turning them into what shapes? We've been turning them into what, Blake? Rectangles. Rectangles, because then when the rectangles, how do we find the area? Why, do we, why is base time tight telling us the area of something? How's it doing that? Uh, well, Johnny, what are you saying there? Right. When I measure the base, I'm really measuring in a way how many squares can fit there. Yeah. And then uh, the height is how many squares can fit up to from the bottom up to. Right. Because I know I have a room for, let's call it seven squares across the bottom. I have room for three squares from bottom to top. And so that tells me I could fit three rows of seven squares, which means my area is what? 21. 21. Or I can fit seven stacks or seven columns of three squares, which is how many squares total? 21. Whether it's three sevens or seven threes, still 21. Right? All on board? Yeah. Good. Thumbs up. All right, did you have your coffee this morning? No, I hope not, no. you're, you're very young. I wish I did. Okay, uh, so now we're talking about uh, trapezoids. We want to talk about how can we manipulate this trapezoid, maybe make a copy of it, maybe just cut it into pieces. What can we do to find like a formula that maybe we can use this length, this length, and the height, plug those in, have the area, okay? Sean? Uh, we would kind of do what the, we did with the triangle. We would uh, copy it. Okay. All right, so I copied it. Then you would have to place the line. You'd have to rotate that one. Rotate upside it. Upside down. All the way upside down. Yeah. Okay. And then place it uh, up and right there, yeah. Okay, and then you rotate it a little bit more. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. After you've done that, you have you have a parallelogram, ah. but you're not done. Not done? No. No, okay. You'll have to cut one of the, you'd have to make a 90 degree angle right there, yeah. Right, okay, good. And cut that, that this little piece off. All right, so that's and, like gone. Yeah, and place it on the other side. So we're gonna move it over here. Yeah. We did this already, right? We did it with the parallel, you're just now applying your Previous knowledge of parallelograms to this situation. Yes. Okay. We move it over here. There we go. And then you have a rectangle. Colored in yellow. And now we have a rectangle that we can find the area by doing what? Base time side. Base time height. Okay. Um, let's say, uh, right, this base, this is the base of the rectangle, and this is the height of the rectangle. Right? Does that make sense? I've got a lot of arrows and lines and stuff. Are you, are you following all that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so base time side is the area of what again? Rectangle. rectangle. That rectangle. Okay. What, are we, what area are we looking for? Trapezoid. The trapezoid. 
Is the area of this trapezoid the same as the area of this rectangle we have? No. No? no. no. How much is it? Half. Half. It's half of that big rectangle right there, right? You can take this away and move it over here. It's half of that. So we need half of that, okay? And that would be, that'd be good, half of the base times the height. But the thing about this rectangle is its base is made out of two different parts of the, the original trapezoid, right? Right. Yeah. So if, if with the original trapezoid I were to measure this, and measure this, well, we should give them names. It's, it makes it easier to talk about. Base one and base two, okay? That works, that's pretty universal. People say base one and base two. Base one and base two. So, area is equal, now what, is, what do we do with base one and base two? Add them. Add them to get what? The base of the, of the rectangle, right? Of that big rectangle that we need. So the base, this base right here is the same as base one of the original trapezoid plus base two of the original trapezoid added together to get the base of that big triangle. Or sorry, big rectangle. Okay? One half base times height. Kind of like a triangle, but it's a trapezoid, and that base is not the base of the trapezoid down here base of this big rectangle, which is actually the two bases added together, okay? Now, when you look at this, if I were to just throw this formula at you, you, you could certainly use it, right? It's not that difficult of a formula. Right. But you look at it and you're like, what happened? Like, take this trapezoid, and I take this and this, I add it together, get that number, multiply it by the height, and then divide that by two. Until you do something like this, something like it at all, this is just, this is just magic. It just seems crazy. It's really a neat coincidence that adding this length plus this length, and I could do it like, I could take half of that now, okay? How, why would I take half of that? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and then multiply it by the height. It's kind of incredible that that gives you the area. But do, by doing this, exactly as Sean uh, laid out for us, uh, so eloquently, you just make a copy of it, you flip it over, you match them up, a lot like we've done with other shapes. Take part of it, move it over, you can see how this formula makes sense. Okay? Uh, I was tutoring one time, and uh, there was this, this woman, she was in charge of the tutoring, and, uh, and, and we were doing area, she was working with the area with, with the kids, and she said, isn't this supposed to be is this right? Is this the right formula for the area of a trapezoid? And it had been years since I had seen the area of a trapezoid. I don't remember what the formula is. So how did I make sure that we had the right formula when she was working with her students? Yeah. Something like this. Okay? That's what I did. Yeah? Um, I'm kind of confused on how you get base one and base two. Okay, thank you for saying that. Uh, so how about this? You pull up to there? Yeah. That makes sense? Okay. So the thing about this base of the rectangle is it's, we have to relate it back to the original shape of the trapezoid, mm -hmm. right? So we can't just say like the base because that rectangle didn't exist to start with, right? Mm -hmm. So where does, that, where does this base come from? The uh, trapezoid. The trapezoid, it's made of the two bases of the trapezoid. We call this base one, Right? When we make a copy of it and we flip it over, that winds up being right here. Mm -hmm. right? And then, well, base 2 is already up there. Right? So the base of this rectangle is equal to this length right here, base 1, plus base 2. Okay. How's that sound? Is that well, less confusing? Oh, uh, yeah. Because, confusing? Well, like, I don't know how you find it. Would it have a measure there? Oh, so if, I, if like you had a problem on a test or something? Is that yeah. yeah so, a pretty simple version of this would be, oh, here's a trapezoid. Uh, this base is six, this base is four, the height is three, find the area. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So we just came up with a formula that if we have that information, we can find the area. Let's find the area of this trapezoid real quick. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go to 
numbers right now? Yeah, just come up with it in your head if you can put it in your head. Johnny, what do you get? 15. Who else has 15? A few 15s. Okay. Anybody? If you didn't get 15, hopefully you're not done yet, or if you got the wrong answer, maybe you clear it up. If you haven't cleared it up, let's just run through it together real quick. One half times base one plus base two times the height. Okay. Well, one half is one half. Okay. Base one is six. Base two is four. Base two is four. Times the height of three. Okay, so uh, we know our order of operations. I know that from your test. You guys are all pretty comfortable with the order of operations. Uh, 10 times 3, okay, I'll do 1 half times 10 is 5, 5 times 3, 15, right? Okay. Let me show you actually the way that I remind myself of the formula for the area of the trapezoid is, um, this is you need to know, it's going to be helpful for you to remember what the area of the trapezoid is when it comes to calculus. Because in calculus, I'm sure you all will take something. Okay? If you have some graph of a function and you want to find the area underneath that graph, which seems like a daunting task because it just seems like a random curvy line, how do I find the area underneath of that? Okay? You can use trapezoids, lots and lots of trapezoids. Uh, like I can put a trapezoid right here. This is like a trapezoid that's turned up on its side. Right? Find the area of that. Find the area of the next trapezoid. Like a, of like billions and trillions of trapezoids, and then add those areas up. Right. Oh, of course, you have a lot more to learn before you can add trillions of things without it taking a lifetime. Yeah. Are you getting middle school announcements? I'm not. Um, because we need Alexander through Tuesday for pictures. Ooh. Okay. For seventh grade. Seventh grade? Yeah, yeah. yeah. seventh grade. Oh. Seventh. seventh grade. Right. Okay. All right. So anyway, here, if I have a, a trapezoid, here's what goes through my mind, probably because it's the first thing that clicked with me. Okay, but it still produces the same formula. Instead of making a copy of the whole thing, I just cut it in half. You might guess that's where the half is going to come from in this drawing. Okay, what do I do with this half, do you think? Cut that half off, take it off. What do you think I would do with that? Similar to what Sean had us do with the copy. Click it down to the other. Yeah, I, could, I could, like, like there was a hinge right here. I could just rotate it, flip it over here, mm -hmm. right? And that half goes over here, like this. Right? So this is gone, and now it's over there. And now it's a parallelogram again. I can move this piece over here. There it is. I made a rectangle, right? This rectangle has a base of uh, 12. Up there, but it's very clear. Of, well, here's part of base 1. Here's the other little part of base 1 right there. And there's base 2. So base 1 plus base 2 gives me the base of this uh, rectangle. And the height is half of the height of the original parallel. So you still get like, half of the height of the original parallelogram times base 1 plus base 2. Okay. So still same formula, different way of thinking about it. Instead of getting two parallelograms and needing half of that area, I just, I'm just actually getting half of the height. All right. So how does that strike? Does that make sense? OK. Have you ever seen like has anybody talked about the error of parallelogram and drawn all that stuff out? And no? You think it's kind of helpful to see things like that? Yeah. We're all on board with things like that. Okay. But keep in mind that when we learn stuff, this is something old, the area of parallelogram, right? You've done, am I wrong to think that you've done area of parallelograms before? A few times. You have done it? Yeah. Maybe a few times. Okay. So it's out there. So it's kind of old, it's not completely new. This explanation is new, it seems. Um, but we're, we're diving in deep. We're understanding something more than just, here's the formula, here's what the letters mean, use it. 
Okay? So if I give you a formula, if it's reasonable, right? If you don't need calculus to understand it, then I'm going to explain it to you. And that might take a little more energy, right? a little more effort. But really, in, in, in reality, later on, when something else more complicated comes up, it'll be even easier because you have the understanding from before. Okay? We're going to use uh, area here in a, in a bit to explain some things that you may not understand about fractions. Okay? If you know this about area, then the fractions thing is going to make much more sense. Right? Anyway, just hang with me. You guys are a great class. I'm not too worried about you. Here we are back at this original thing. So what's the answer to this? What is this, this line segment called, Josie? The diameter. The diameter, that's right. It goes all the way across through the center. So how many of these do you think you can put around the outside? 3.14. 3.14. Where'd you come up with that? Last year. Last year. So you've seen a drawing like this and we've talked about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that 3.14, that has a special name. What's that name? Pi. Pi. The name is Pi. Okay. So the first thing, in order to understand this, this area of a circle thing that we're about to talk about, you need to understand the well, what is that measurement all the way around? It's called what? All the way, yeah. Circumference. The circumference. So the circumference is equal to, uh, well, roughly this, not exactly that. 3.14 times the diameter, okay? But I want you to see you know, a little bit more intuitively something that you may not have really paid much attention to before. Like 2 pi r, right? This is almost the same as 2 pi r. So the circumference is roughly 3.14 of these diameters bent into circle shapes and put around the outside. There's one of them, and there's two, and there's three, and there's 0.14 of those diameters. 3.14 of those go around it. Uh, yeah, approximately. When we see 2 pi r, we can, we can see that this formula gives us that if we this. What's R? Yeah? Radius. The radius. What's two of the radiuses that add up together to be? Alex? Oh, okay. The diameter. Two radiuses put together. So if I multiply the radius times two, that's the same as whatever the diameter is. So you can see how this is pi times the diameter. I don't fully understand why it's two pi r, not just pi d. Because, well, I don't know. It's <laughs> two times, but it's simplified. Two times r is d. Uh, and you can see that pi, this is 3.14159, and so on and so on, an infinite number of decimal points, it never ends. Okay? It's about 3.14 times the diameter, which is kind of saying 3.14 of these diameters can go around the circle. Okay. Uh, if you were going to stack these binders on top of each other, like a stack like this, uh, and imagine like a theoretical like infinite stack, just up and up and up and up. How would you stack it so they don't fall over, Alex? Um, like, you could flip-flop, like there'd be one like this, and then one like this. this. And one like this, and one like this. So, when we have two of them together, we're kind of back to a flat surface, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys understand that. Okay. So, uh, you may know that the area is pi r squared. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember that? There's really, it's really challenging to see why that is. Or is it? Am I wrong about that? That seem intuitive? Does it seem like there's some kind of an explanation why it's pi r squared? No? How do you remember that it's pi r squared? being told, telling yourself, pi r squared is the area of a circle. Right? Okay. I'm going to show you a picture of how you can be sure that the area is pi r squared by turning the circle into a rectangle. Okay? So I'm going to do, and it has to do with the way we would stack binders. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this circle, I think that's what I have in this next thing here, right? So use the conundrum. Uh, it doesn't have any rectangular resemblance at all. 
Uh, like the parallelogram or the trapezoid, all those things had straight lines and we could kind of mess with it and fudge it and, and get it to be a rectangle. How do we do it with a circle? Uh, so we did the circumference. The circumference is 2 pi r. We'll leave it like 2 pi r because you know, r is useful in this calculation. So all the way around from here to there, back around again, is how long? 3.14 times, times the diameter, or? Pi d. Or pi d, or uh, the radius times 2 pi. All those things are equivalent. Right? We'll leave it like this, just for now, because we want the r's to kind of collect and make something uh, useful and interesting. Right. So here we are, pi times r. Now, how? if I just go from here to there, halfway around the circle. How much of the circumference is that? Yeah. Half. So you're halfway around, half of the circumference. Right. You go walk all the way around, that's all the circumference, halfway around, half the circumference. So this green arc right here, okay, we'll just call it uh, S. Okay, so S is actually a letter that represents the length of an arc. Okay, call it S. What's it equal to? I know what the circumference is equal to. What's that equal to? Half of that. So what, if I cut this in half, how could I say that simply? If I cut this in half. What's half of 2 times pi r? Okay. Uh, 1 pi r. 1 pi r. If I take this and I multiply by 1 half, the half and 2 will cancel each other out. Okay. If you're not sure why half times two cancel each other out, that's part of what we're gonna talk about with fractions at some point soon. Okay. But it is just pi r. So this is pi r, and this is another pi r, and together if I add a pi r and a pi r, I get two pi r. Okay, so that's half, pi r. All right. So now for the way that we turn a circle into a rectangle. Let's start out slow. We'll take the circle, we'll just cut it into lots of pieces. This drawing has it cut into 14 pieces. Okay? And then we take those pieces and we stack them kind of like those binders we talked about. Like this, and we turn them like that, and like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. So they, they line up straight like that. Okay? So far so good? I think it's not. Okay. How long is it from here to here? <laughs> like using the circle. As your reference. How long is it from there to there? What part of the circle is that? The radius. Okay, so it's the radius. Right? Going good? Thumbs up? Everybody following along? You with me? Who's a sort of? I just got your picture. Oh, because you're taking pictures. Yeah. So, uh, did you see this? Yeah. Okay. Is that cool? Good with that. Okay. Uh, we have, we're taking this, just cut it into any, any amount of pieces that you want 14, 15, 16, a million, whatever. And we just stagger them like this, and they line up straight. Okay. Now, you see how we have some of the arc right there, the circle y part, down here, and some of it up here, and then some of it down there, and some of it up here, some of it down here, some of it up here. Right? So, if I were to walk along and add up all of these, how, first of all, what part of the circle is that related to? The radius, the diameter? The circumference, yeah, very good. The circumference, how much of the circumference is this? Half of the circumference, okay? Half of the circle. There's the other half down there. So this is, according to what we just talked about back here, half of the circumference is pi times r. Okay. That's not a rectangle, is it? Okay. Well, to get it to be a rectangle, let's cut it into even more pieces. Okay. So now those, the, these little arcs right here are even shorter. Does that make sense? Okay. So they're even closer together. They're, it's, it's not very curved. Okay, just a little piece of it. But again, from here to there is how long? Uh, 
the radius of the circle, right? And still, half of the pieces down here, half the pieces up here, so this is still pi r, half the circumference. Right? So from here to the next slide, I'm going to have to just ask you to suspend your disbelief a bit. Trust me. Okay? We're talking about infinity here. So the rules that, that work with finite numbers don't always apply to infinite numbers, okay? So what we're gonna do is cut this into an infinite number of pi slices, as we've done with the previous two slides. Not a million pieces, not a trillion pieces, not a quadrillion pieces, not a Google pieces, not a Googleplex pieces, an infinite number of pieces, okay? And just like from 14 pieces to, what's this, 22 pieces, that arc keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and less and less and less of a, of a curve is happening there. When you cut it into an infinite number of pieces, infinite, you actually get, like all those little arcs are so tiny, so not very curvy that we actually can create this straight line right across. And it's like all of these pie slices that you can't even see because they're so thin, because there's an infinite number of them. It's just like they're just the very tippy tops of those arcs, which if you zoom in really close, any curve will start to look like it's flat, right? I'm standing on a curve that looks like it's flat. What do I mean by that? The Earth. The Earth is curved, but if I look at it, am I close enough? zoomed in vantage point, like from what we see right now, it looks flat. Okay? Yeah? Jacob? Jacob? Yeah, okay. they told me to send all the seven graders. All the seven graders. All right. But when we go to an infinite number of pieces, that curviness actually just ceases to exist. It's flat there. It's flat there. Okay? Well, these pie slices are still it's written over here already, R, right? It's R this way. And across here is half of the circumference, pi R. And we have what shape do we have here? And how do we find the area of a rectangle? What's the base of this rectangle equal to? Pi times R, half of the circumference, right? All those infinite number of pieces, half of those arcs are down here. Okay. And what's the height of this rectangle? R. So pi times R times R. What's R times R? R plus R would be the diameter. But R times R is the radius squared. Pi R squared. So even a circle, you can take it. If we slide it, cut it into an infinite number of pieces, turn it into a rectangle, pi R squared. Pi R is along there, R there. Okay. Pretty... Um, like I said, you, your brain may be saying, but they're, they're really just like, they're a little bit curved, right? They're not quite straight. It's asking you to trust me, we have these things called infinitesimals, right? These things that are smaller than any number, but bigger than zero, okay? Which is a, I, I can't even fully wrap my head around that, a number that is smaller than any other number, but bigger than zero. Can you squeeze a number in there? No, it's called an infinitesimal. They're so small, they're infinitesimally small, we actually do get a rectangle. How's that? That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, you show that to your parents. There's lots of cool proofs of why the area of a rectangle would have to be pi r squared. Or, sorry, the area of a circle. But this one's pretty neat because it just turns it back into a rectangle. So we have lots of areas of different shapes that we can just turn into rectangles. And then all those pieces, all those measurements from the original shape, just translate into parts of the rectangle. Questions? Good so far. Well, that that does it for our our area stuff. All the different circle is the last shape that we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, but a more important goal 
is for you to understand how we're going to approach math, and that is to investigate it as much as we can, understand it as deeply as possible, so that later, when we want to use something like this, we're not just relying on it, I hope I remember it right, because maybe I remembered it wrong, but I hope I remembered it right. Now you don't have to remember it. You can say, what's the error of a trapezoid? I cut it in half, or I make a copy, and oh, I remember how to find that now. Alice? Um, so if you cut it into bigger pieces, wouldn't it be kind of a parallelogram? Uh, well, close, but still, these are curved. And as hard as it, is, it might be to believe, this is not curved at all. It is flat. It is a perfectly straight line. You can kind of see that, like with, with a parallelogram, it's equal, well, it's equal to the rectangle with the same base and the same height, right? So you can see it's starting to get there. This, it's not quite the 90. This, isn't, this radius isn't the height of this parallelogram. Um, so, but you can see how it's getting close. It's getting close to, even if you treat this like a parallelogram and the radius like the height and pi r like this, it would still be pi r squared. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the next thing then. I want you to, without a calculator, find these products, okay? And you probably won't have much of a difficult time telling me after that how, what the area of the rectangles are, okay? But there's an important connection between those two things that are gonna, it's eventually going to lead us to uh, an understanding of why this algorithm works that you're used to using, and also why you multiply fractions the way that you do. Also, do you in your notes? Yeah, in your notes. Okay, let's look at this first one together. You may not be done. That's okay. Hopefully, you're done or really, really close to done with at least the first one there. Yeah. All right. Um, so, I'm going to do this algorithm. You know what the word algorithm means? No, have you ever heard of it? Yes. Maybe it's heard it floating around out there. Algorithm, not a very complicated word. It's just kind of a fancy word. It gets used in computers a lot. It means a set of steps. All right? A set of steps, whatever. Your computer has lots of algorithms that it follows. First it does this, and then it does this, and it looks for this, and if that's true, then it does this. Okay? So the algorithm we use to multiply these two is not the same as multiplying these two numbers together. I know that sounds weird. We want to multiply these two numbers together, okay? But we may not even understand exactly what that means. This algorithm will tell us what 25 times 32 is, okay? But it's really kind of hiding what multiplication is. It's not, you don't really have to understand multiplication to run this algorithm, right? Just like you don't have to use, know how to, your computer does what it does to use it. You click a button, it does what it does. You have no idea what's happening, but it does it, and that's all you need to know. All right, so we don't want to be ignorant of what's going on here. But let's do the algorithm together. First, 2 times 5 is 10. 10. Well, I'm not going to put 10 there. I'm going to put a 0 there. I do what with a 1? Period. One of the classic jokes of people in a movie or TV doing something in their head. 1, they say out loud. Next, we do 2 times 2. Four. And even saying 2 times 2 is kind of a lie. Not really what's going on here, but we're going to keep going. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 five. is 5. All right, and okay, 2 times 5, 3 times 2, we've done it all there. 3 is next, 3 times 5. Again. Okay, not really, a, not a complete true, 3 times 5 is kind of a lie as well. We don't need that. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15, but we did, we do actually carry away from that one as well. 3 times 2, 6, plus 1, 7, okay, 0. Out of five, if I would put a zero there, a one there, 800. Okay, now we did that algorithm. We found the product of those two numbers correctly, but we still don't have to know what's going on. We don't have to know what multiplication is to run that algorithm. But it's not the way it's going to be forever. Okay. Uh, let's do these last two real quick. Four times three, 12. Four 16, 17, 5 times 3, 15, 5 there, 5 times 4 is 21, 2, uh, 12, 3, 2 times 3 over 22, 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 6 is 6, 9 times 8 is 72, 9 times 6 is 54, 
plus 7, 61. Okay, 8, 8, 6,188. All right? Okay. Ready? Same answers as me? Did I do it wrong? We're good? We're good. Okay. So, let's answer this real quickly. What's the area of this rectangle? Yeah? 800. 800. Because why? Because the area is what exactly? 800 squares. 800 squares will fit in that rectangle, right? I don't know how big these squares are. Nobody told you how big they are. That's fine. But 800 squares will fit in that rectangle. What's the area of this guy? Josie? 2,322 squares. Squares. Very good. I like that. I'm just going to write that because it's worthy of writing. It's squares. How big are those squares? I'm not sure, but I know I'm right about them. Squares. That many squares fitting. Yes, last one. 6,188 squares. Are you coming up with these so quickly? We don't know. I did set this up on purpose this way. That many squares will fit. Here is a challenge for your homework. Kind of a big challenge. If you don't quite get it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Do your best. But, do you, you notice the steps we're following here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two times five, two times two, three times five, three times two. Okay? You can use this rectangle. Have you guys seen the, the rectangle model for multiplying? No. No? It's pretty cool. We'll definitely get into it next time, but. See if you can break this, I'm going to give you a hint, break this rectangle into four pieces by, by four pieces, I mean like that. Now they don't have to be equal pieces, but four pieces, okay? Four pieces, how many rectangles have I made? Four rectangles. I want those rectangles somehow, when I, when I find the area of them, I'm doing like the same steps as, as I did here. I should see in this a 2 times a 5, a 2 times a 2, a 3 times a 5, a 3 times oh. a 2. Oh. Okay? Oh. Alright? So, don't give it away. Right? If you, if you have it right now, then take the time to write it down in your paper. You have, it's like 7 seconds. So, yeah, we're almost set here. That'll be your homework, alright? Is that a bell? Yeah, it was. Alex, have a good day, everybody. Um, so